Hi folks, my name is Darren Gertis. It is day 295 of this terrible war in Ukraine and I do these daily updates if you're not familiar with me and I go through all the headlines of the day and today the topic seem to be geopolitical. Like here's what's going on in the political sphere. I'll touch a little bit on what's going on on the ground militarily. Um, I will put in some things that I can't even talk about on YouTube and I'll put the links below that so that you can look at that on your, on your own. I'm also going to show you my absolute favorite comment of any comment that I've ever received on this channel throughout its entire lifetime. So you want to hear this. Stay tuned to the end. I want to start here and I want to start yesterday. I put out a explainer that was talking about like, why did the war even start in the first place? And a number of you said, well, there's no one reason. That's true. There are multiple reasons, but there's some reasons that are more important than others. And that's what I was addressing with that is the primary reason. Now, Philip Fox 8797 said, rubbish, you have been watching too much Fox and Republican BS. Well, that is true. I have been, but that's not, and it has nothing to do with what I was talking about yesterday. Um, I also watch RT just to see what the Russians are saying. Um, and but that's but he goes on and says this. This was planned long ago. The Russian elite and Putin are afraid of one thing and one thing only. What happened in Ukraine could happen in Russia. Yes. And that's what ML Harden was saying was the contrast between what's going on in, in Ukraine and what's going on in Russia was destabilizing to Russia. And so we're saying kind of the same thing. But uh, and he goes on and says the U.S. could not care about NATO or the USA and senior Russians have stated this over the years. Everything they do is to remain in power. That's right. So Ukraine is a threat, not because it's even a military threat, not even because like they have weapons that could threaten Russia. Ukraine's a threat because it's a contrast and Russia is terrified. Putin is terrified of uh, a, an orange revolution or a color revolutions coming to Russia. That's what he's afraid of. He was horrified when he saw what happened to Muammar Gaddafi. Okay, as we move forward, I usually do this at the end, but I want to do this here. And that is, I've talked about supporting Ukraine and, and supporting uh, a businessman in Ukraine who sells uh, mugs and t-shirts and other things along these lines. Can you get a t-shirt cheaper than this? Yes, you can get, can you get a mug cheaper than this? Yes, just buy it. Just buy this kind of, like, if you look over my shoulder, you'll see my Ukraine hat uh, sitting on the, uh, on the, t on the globe back here. Once you see it, you won't be able to unsee it, right? So, uh, buy it. Identify with the Ukrainian people in some way. Uh, I have a, another shirt that says, um, I, I need ammunition, not a ride that my daughter bought me earlier in the year. And whether you buy from here or buy from somewhere else, just buy that and identify. I think that's good for you. And I think this would be, if you buy here, great for the person that is over there trying to make a living on that. Okay, let me move forward. Okay, so uh, today that we're talking about geopolitics, um, the, the first thing is, is Zelensky talking about the with the head of the International Committee. Hey, look, bring the Russians into the international competition. You're dealing with terrorist states. You can't be doing that. And if I was Zelensky, I'd feel exactly the same way. Uh, I don't take a, a thing away from him for, for having that kind of stance. Um, next, the uh, Czech Senate, this is far more important than the Olympics, the Czech Senate has voted uh, to recognize the Holodomor as genocide. And like most Americans and maybe some Europeans don't even, you know, that that new was, was that word Holodomor was new to our vocabulary before the Ukrainian invasion. And now that we're seeing it, uh, you know, you recognize, wow, this was really a horrible, horrible event and it ought to be recognized and that it wasn't before is truly tragic. Okay. Now it's not just the Czechs that were doing that. It was also the EU, uh, the European uh, parliament that was recognizing it, recognizing the Holodomor, the artificial famine that Stalin created to inflict upon the Ukrainians. It was genocide then, and what the Russians are doing is genocide now. And so, um, yeah, you got, just got to uh, be aware that this is like a thing. And to condemn this now is right. I think the last line here said, uncondemned brutality will continue to repeat itself until we choose to call it out. Fin uh, finally, Europe is waking up to its moral obligation to fully evaluate, recognize, and condemn Soviet crimes. And we're doing that because we're realizing the Russian crimes are cut out of somewhat of the same cloth. Okay, um, Herzan completely de-energized -energi due to enemy shelling. This is happening on Thursday. Uh, it's just being, it's just brutal. It's just 
that's what's going on. Um, now, they are getting a little bit better at some of this, at, you know, part, part of the resistance, and they're getting better at, at filling the gaps with power generation. So the U.S. government just turned over more than 130 generators uh, at, to work at boiler houses, to heat uh, supply stations. So they're, this is a patchwork. But what they really need is they really need to be able to have adequate air defense, and I'll talk about that in a little, little bit. In the meantime, I saw this very disturbing uh, headline and I thought, wow, okay, so I'm not going to talk about this because this is a family-friendly rated G kind of um, uh, YouTube channel. And I, I know that there are parameters and I don't want to cross YouTube's parameters, but I'll put the link below. You can read the headline yourself. It's about less than human dignity for uh, less than mature persons. Okay, so uh, I'm not even going to read the headline. Again, you can read that. And then I thought, wow, okay, I'm looking at ABC News in Australia. Now, ABC News Australia tends to be legitimate. Um, I've never had a particular issue with it. And Australians, if you're watching, you can tell me if there's an issue with it. But I just started to, to Google to make sure that I was seeing what I was seeing. Here it is in Fox News. Um, here it is in Newsmax. And Newsmax is a, is a right-leaning political something. Fox News tends to be to the right. But here it is in Reuters. Okay? And so I looked it up and I saw it in Reuters. I saw it again in Kiev Post. So here's the Reuters article of the same exact thing. And so again, what I'm trying to do is teach you triangulate. When you see something that could be, well, is that really what's going on? Look it up and do the research yourself. Same thing. Here's the, Here it is in the Kiev Post. Same thing again. Okay, and I'm not even going to speak about what it is because it's somewhat detestable. Okay, I'll go on to the next article from here. Okay, so Putin is preparing a major offensive in a new year, says the Ukraine defense minister. And he said a few things that I thought were really important to highlight. So in an interview with The Guardian, Ukraine's defense minister, Reznikov, said that while Ukraine was now able to successfully defend itself against Russian missile attacks targeting key infrastructure, including the energy grid, now that all that was what I was talking about, alluding to earlier when I was talking about, hey, they not only need the generators, they need to stop it. And they've gotten progressively better at it. And when they have a patriot systems or patriot systems throughout the country, they'll be much better even yet. Okay, but he goes on to talk about what he's expecting to come down the pike. Reznikov said he expects Russia will continue to mobilize its citizens beyond the current partial mobilization. And they're doing it kind of through the back door by mobilizing citizens of Donbass uh, forcibly, but they're, they're going to have to come back to the well later on if they, if they have any hope to win. And I don't think they can without it. Um, even with it, I think it's going to be difficult. Russian mobilization has worked, said Zeloni. They are 100% prepared. He added that a new major Russian attack could come in February at best, March at worst, at the end of January. Okay, so um, so maybe February, maybe March, at the earliest would be the end of January by the time they have their uh, newly minted, mobilized soldiers ready to go. Well, we and the world should not relax because the ultimate goal of Russian Federation is to conquer all of Ukraine and then it can move on. Yeah, and I think that's exactly right. I think their goal is still maximalist. That's what the ISW is saying as well. Okay, next article. Um, this was a very weird freak article that I'll keep my eye on, but I don't know any more about it than what's in the article. Poland's police chief was wounded after a gift from an Ukrainian official explodes. So he's there visiting his counterpart in Ukraine, the police chief. Um, and, and he's uh, yesterday there was an explosion in a room next to the office of the police chief. One of the presents the police chief received during his working visit to Ukraine exploded. Like, what's going on there? And he got it from a Ukrainian official. So <laughs> I don't know if somebody is trying to create bad blood between the two countries or exactly what, but this this wasn't good. Okay, so let's shift gears here. Now it's time for some fun with Russian state media. Okay, first article is Russia hackers expose the list of Ukraine's losses. Now, I wouldn't believe this number uh, just because it's in Pravda. So let's just set that aside. But let, let's read it at face value and then we'll discount it. The number of Ukrainian soldiers who were declared missing in the course of the special operation are 35,382 uh, people. Now, first, I don't believe 
the number to begin with. Two, they inflate numbers. Even if they had a legitimate number, they would probably create a multiple. Um, I, I don't know that they actually got the list or if there is a list. So, but this is what's put out in Pravda to a Russian or pro-Russian audience. It goes about the military men whose bodies were not returned to their relatives from the battlefield. Ursula von... Now, here's what was really interesting to my mind, and it's different than the number above. Um, they then tied this to Ursula von der Leyen uh, saying about this bit about 100,000, which she got from the American general who ballpark that. Ursula von der Leyen accidentally announced the total number of losses of the armed forces of Ukraine is 100,000 people. Advisor to the office of the president, Mikhail Polodek, subsequently cut the number to 10,000 and Zelensky to 8. As if the number to 10,000 wasn't an accurate number, it was just trying to make it look like, right? So that's the kind of seeds of of disingenuousness that they're trying to sow in the minds of Russia about Ukraine. Okay, next article. Um, Russia installs huge yards, uh, ICBM to send clear signal to the West. This is again, nuclear saber rattling, the installation of yards, uh, intercontinental ballistic missile into a silo launcher in the Kolosny missile formation was a signal that Russia is sending to the West. So they keep sending these signals because they're trying to deter the United States from giving Ukraine the support it needs. Okay, next. Um, now this one was interesting as well. And I talked about Erdogan the other day. Erdogan is marching to his own drum. He's not a friend of Ukraine, but he's not an enemy. He's not a friend of Russia, but he's not an enemy. He's a friend of Turkey and his interests. And if you follow the interests, you understand Erdogan. Turkish president, so Recep Erdogan wants Russia to make Europe dependent on Turkey. Okay, so if Europe is dependent on Turkey, um, then oil is flowing through Turkey, his interests are being whatever, and so they're talking about oil and gas pipelines. Turkish leadership makes it no secret that they would like to build a gas hub in Turkey, uh, supporting southern Europe. If the plan becomes reality, Turkey will become the most important point for supplying natural gas to the uh, southern Europe with access to central Europe. And uh, yeah, so that's what's going on there. But again, if you, if you follow... So Turkey and China are the like the big winners here in what's going on. Ukraine is obviously getting hammered by Russia. Russia is becoming a big loser as well. Russia used to be the big brother to China, uh, and I think it's inverting. The longer this goes on, the more China is going to become the big brother to Russia, uh, and that dynamic is shifting. Same with Turkey. Turkey is as as long as China just plays it cool and doesn't interfere and just lets Russia degrade itself, China is going to do better. Same with Turkey. Turkey used to be the inferior country in the region between Turkey and Russia, and the more Russia degrades itself, the larger Turkey's presence becomes over time. And I think Erdogan knows that. And so he's he, he's trying to broker, you know, the grain deal and things. And he's making he's bringing himself above what's going on with between Ukraine and um, and Russia. OK, I'm, I told you earlier I was going to show you my absolute favorite comment of any comment that I've received ever, ever on this channel. Here it is. So this was. Uh, UA infantrymen, 23 hours ago, Ukraine, I, was, I asked on the community, hey, where are you from? If you're in the United States, which state? Um, and he said, Ukraine, watching your videos while on the front line. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I mean, you're, you're watching my videos while on the front line. Like, I, I've never felt the weight of what I was doing until I read that comment. I was like, wow, because I'm, I'm trying to be accurate. I'm trying to triangulate and show you exactly what's going on from a broader perspective. Uh, I don't claim to be a military man, so I, I don't really try to say in this battle and that battle and the other thing. I, I try to you stay in my lane, but wow, that somebody is there that, that's watching that, <laughs> I'm just, I'm really... Uh, Amazed. I said, please tell me if I'm getting anything wrong. You said you had great overviews. And for me, it's especially interesting to see how the situation in Ukraine is being perceived from the outside. We're with you. We're supporting you. I think the most of the Western world, with the exception of maybe Hungary, um, are, are with you. We, we want to see you succeed. Thank you for watching. Uh, I, I, I deeply appreciate that. Thank the rest of you for watching as well. Thank you for being the kind of people that care about Ukraine and the UA infantrymen on the front line.